Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment meeting for October 3rd, 2019, which is now called to order. We ask that you silence all your cell phones if you have not already. If you are not the applicant and you wish to speak on a matter, we ask that you fill out one of these white sign-up cards that are available outside. We ask that you limit your comments to a maximum of five minutes and um, that you not interrupt a board member while a board member is speaking. First item on the agenda is to receive the minutes from the September 15th meeting. Do I have a motion or any changes? No changes. Motion to receive uh, minutes from September 5th. Second. A motion and a second to approve the minutes from the September 5th meeting. Cast your votes, please. And the motion's approved. Next order of business is continuance request or application withdrawals. Do we have any? Don't have any continuance. Any applicants that are present want to request a continuance or withdrawal? Okay. Uh, and no matters on the consent docket, so we'll move to items requiring a separate vote. We have item number one, case number 14652, request for a variance to the minimum building height of a 25 feet and two stories in the Lincoln Boulevard corridor sub-district of the Urban Design District located at 4913 North Lincoln Boulevard. The applicant present. Hi there. Hey. Michael Navard, okay. 2209 Northwest 57th Street. Uh, we w met with uh, Urban Design. We're left with a very small site that currently has a 3,500 square foot office building that's pretty dilapidated. Uh, we're wanting to tear it down and replace it with you know something new and modern, but basically the same size. Uh, the site is 16,000 square feet. It's bound on both property lines by, uh, or on two of the four property lines by retaining walls uh, where our property line actually extends past those, as you'll see on the, what would be the west property line here. Uh, so we're left with a very small site we can't put much on it. Uh, the intended use is actually a duplex style office building. So building a second story for a single tenant uh, of 1,800 square feet doesn't seem practical uh, as it relates to the design constraints of additional ADA elevators, et cetera. So we, we feel that a 3,800 square foot office building set up in this manner is the most efficient and uh, fits within the other buildings around it as well. So we ask for your approval and uh, happy to take any questions. How much parking would be required if this were a two-story building? Well, it's based on the square footage of the overall building. Uh, there's 19 stalls required for this building. We have 20. Uh, we can't ask for a very, or we could ask for a variance. We don't think it's a wise idea given Lincoln Boulevard is a very fast corridor. You can't park on the street. We're mid block. Parking around the corner would not be advantageous. So, uh, you know, this, this kind of provides us the best optimal solution. One of the things we have to consider, we're, we're approving a variance if we, if we approve this for a future use as well. Sure. So I know you're current or the proposed tenant doesn't really fit with their design, but we're also considering the future use. Uh, board members, any questions? Uh, I listened to the hearing. Uh, uh, this is in line with your current building. Uh, you're replacing an old building. Uh, you're not exceeding, you're not, you do not want the two stories. The two stories do not configure with the rest of the remaining area in the Lincoln Boulevard area. Um, so this would be in line with the current design. Uh, the Urban Design Commission recommended to the board that it be approved. I think they did require uh, the brick lanes coating mm -hmm. on the east and west side. Is that correct? Well, the entire building is brick, but yeah, they... But it, they required all of that, so they made some additional requirements. And uh, so I believe it would be in order, and there wouldn't be a parking efficiency unless we made them build the 25-foot height. So it meets parking because you're not going to go to that second story. Yeah, I, I don't like to think of it as us making them build the two-story. I think the code's required. But sure. um, I, I do think that that 
property to the north of you, that's one story also. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. And so I think to your point, uh, Ms. Lewis, that I agree, some of the adjacent properties are also one story. So, um, board members, any questions or a motion? Well, with this increase, so are you going to have offices upstairs too? Is that what's. There, well, there, there is no second I mean, story. Okay, so it's yeah. just. Okay, never mind. Right. Any motions? Was anyone else signed up to speak on this matter? Okay, any motions? I'll make a motion. Uh, motion to approve case number 14652. Uh, reasons that it meets the statutory requirements for a variance. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve case number 14652 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. Cast your votes, please. And Mr. Privet, you've got one more. Well, you, by voice vote. Yay. Okay. Uh, the motion's approved. We have item number two. Case number 14662, request for a variance to the use of metal siding for exterior walls on new construction in the CCBD Central Business District and Urban Design Overlay District located at 15 Southwest 25th Street. Is the applicant present? Item number two? Okay, we'll go ahead and move that one to the end of the docket. We'll call uh, item number three. Item number three, case number 14663, request for a variance to the 15-foot corner side yard setback, maximum building wall height, uh, maximum building metal wall height of 10 feet, uh, minimum roof pitch and maximum overhead door height in the R1 single family residential district located at 10017 Trafalgar Drive. Hello. Mark Davis uh, with uh, 10017 South Trafalgar Drive. Um, we have uh, only been at the house for about nine months. We just moved into the neighborhood. Uh, we've been looking for a property we could build a building in or on uh, for storage for our travel trailer basically is the main thing is what we originally were doing it for. Um, that's why we're needing the variance as far as the, the height of it. Now as far as the setback, Originally, I was told 15 foot. I guess I misunderstood. I thought that meant 15 foot from the curb back. So it is behind my fence line. Uh, there's other, several other buildings in my neighborhood that are on the fence line. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not out of character as far as that. Uh, there are other buildings in my neighborhood that are just as tall as what I'm building. I don't know if they're legal or not. <laughs> But they're there, they're all in my neighborhood. There's probably 12, 12 to 15 buildings. I'm not exactly sure. I took pictures. I think you have pictures of some of them. I actually got pictures of a few others that I took. Uh, I know we have a few neighbors that uh, don't want the building. Uh, but I have almost 30 signatures of neighbors directly around my house. Here, I, I think I gave you guys six of them, which are right on my house. I mean, the house is right behind, uh, to the east of me, to the south of me, three houses to the west of me. All those neighbors signed off saying they had absolutely no problem with my building. Um, I have another 23, I think, since then, spanning further out, still right there in my small part of the neighborhood that have absolutely no problem with my building. I have those here if you would like to look at them. Uh, I have them right there. I think you should submit those just so that they're in the record. Right. They're not in the packet. Yeah, I have not. No, seen. not in the original packet. No, these are when we got to change the variance, I went and got more. So I'm just letting you know that there are several neighbors in our neighborhood that have absolutely no problem with the building whatsoever. So, I mean, it's almost like 30 that, are, that have no problem that I've personally talked to. Now, there may be more. I don't know. Uh, the other issues we have is I've already had my van broken or my truck broke into. Like I said, we've only been there nine months. 
stole about $5,000 worth of tools out of my truck. Another reason why we're wanting the building, so I can, because it's taller, I can't fit it in my garage, so I can put it inside this building uh, to make it safe. Our neighborhoods, you know, it's not a bad neighborhood at all. This stuff happens pretty much wherever you live. Obviously, this would make it safer for us. Uh, it's not going to hurt anybody's property values. It's going to make them go higher, if nothing else. I've never, that I know of, known of a person building a, a nice building on their property and their property value go down. It, I don't think that happens, but uh, we're just coming to ask you guys to approve it so we can get it finished. It's like it's, it's like a day away from being finished, completely finished. It's not taller than my house. Uh, it, it's, it's in accordance with everything else as far as where it's setting at besides you know being too close to the street itself. And we would just hope that you guys would, you know, look at that, have an idea of what we're trying to do, understand that the neighbors or majority of the neighbors around us have absolutely no problem with it. Um, like I said, it's not going to be a building. It's, it's not for any kind of commercial use whatsoever. It's a residential storage building for us, for our family. Uh, <laughs> we're going to put the travel trailer in there for one. I'm going to put my truck in there for two. And uh, you know other normal household storage items. It's, it's, there's nothing out of the ordinary. No kind of commercial business being run out of it. Nothing like that whatsoever. Okay. Did you want to submit those support letters for the record? Or sure. I know I haven't seen them. I'd like to yeah, see them. Yeah. Definitely. If you have copies yep. of them, um, we'll need to keep those. So. Okay. I had them all sign their name, print their name, and put their address on there just so you guys could have an idea of where we're at around my, around my neighborhood. And like I said, they're all right there. And, and the other thing I was going to say is I know that there's a, a right of way, I guess, is what I'm impeding on, is what, they, what I've been told. I didn't know this at the time. Obviously, I would have moved it back a little further. Uh, we're, you know, we're in the back part of the neighborhood. It's not a main street whatsoever. It's a residential street. It's, I don't, you know, I don't see how there's any way it's ever going to be expanded. Uh, only thing that we may happen is when we, if we ever add a uh, driveway to it, you know, if something happened, the city may have to tear that driveway up, and I have to re-put it back in. I mean, that's, I mean, I understand that risk, but. So you plan on putting a driveway there, or you don't have current plans to put a driveway there? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, sir. Do you, you have plans to put a driveway there, or you don't have plans? There's not one there right now, no, sir. Uh, we haven't got a permit. We haven't even got that far yet as far as just adding a driveway there. Uh, I don't know if we would ever even do that or not for sure. Okay. So, the travel trailer is only going to be pulled out of there five to eight times a year. I mean, you know, my, obviously enough, if I park my truck in there, my truck will be going in there, but... There would be a requirement if you're going to drive into that location you can't jump to curb so you would have to put in an approach okay that's not a problem at all board members any questions i would like to just have you go over uh, with the size of the building and everything in, in great detail as to how tall it's going to be and 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 how much of the height uh, differential and how much of the actual setback differential there would be that you're requesting okay and go over the materials and everything please yes ma'am the uh again the setback right now is 15 foot from the from the street so it makes it about 30 foot i believe or 31 foot from the center of the street which is i think it's supposed to be 40 is the actual code i believe so it's about nine foot into the right of way uh, again, it is behind. It is two foot behind my fence line, so it is not butted up to my fence. It's two foot behind my fence line. Um, the square footage is 960 square feet, which I'm allowed a thousand. Um, the side walls are. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Uh, the overhead door itself is 12 foot, so the side walls are. 14 foot, I think, or 13 foot. And the actual overall exact height of the building, I don't know what it is. I just know that it is in concurrence with, it's not as tall as my house. 
So if you drive all the way down Casa Linda, straight all the way down to the very far south end of Casa Linda, and you look down there, you can't see my building above my house. So it is, it is lower than my, the roof of my house. So I would say it's under 15 foot tall. But I understand that it doesn't meet the pitch requirements as of right now. Is that I'm so, correct? I'm the sorry. The pitch requirements of the roof of the structure does it meet the requirements? You, are you asking me what the requirements are? No. I, no you, you were mentioning the height of the building. So if you're not meeting the requirements and, and we ask you to meet those requirements, maybe the height will increase. Can you talk about it, John? She, she, Basically, the 412 pitch, if you, if you met the 412 pitch, oh. the building would have to be taller, which most likely would put it over the height of the house. I, I believe it would. I don't know that for a fact, but I do believe that it would put it over the height of my house, yes, because like I said, right now it is, I don't know, one to two foot, probably two foot shorter than my house. So if you added a higher pitch, you're probably talking about another three foot, I think. So I believe it would make it actually slightly higher than my house. Yeah, but I, you're seeking a variance for that as well, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, and I apologize. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a, Builder, so I don't know all the stuff that well. One thing I just want to clear up: it, none of this is on the right of way. You are two foot off the right of way. Your fence line is on the property line, which oh, is the right of way. Okay. From there out to the street. Okay. So you're two foot back from the property line, which should be 15. Yeah, I'm two foot behind my fence line. Yes. Board members, I have two people signed up to speak. So any questions before we? I just listen. Um, hear them first. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. We'll call you back up. Thank you. First person I have to speak, I think it's um, Denny or Donnie? Downey? Okay. My name is Reed Downey. I live at 9924 Casa Linda. I've lived there. 11 years. Previous to that, I lived across the street at 10,005 Casa Linda. I've been in the Brookwood neighborhood for 40 years. You know, there's a proper way to get a, a building erected, and it's called getting a building permit. Mr. Davis could have gotten a building permit, and we wouldn't be here today. But he didn't. He chose not to do so. I'm probably the person that's most affected by his putting up the building. And I can assure you that his building is above his roof line. I've looked at it from several different angles. And for me, his building is an absolute eyesore. I brought some pictures. This is the view. So I hate to interrupt you, but to get your comments on the record, we'll just need you by the microphone, at least your voice by the microphone. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Can you see the picture? I spend a lot of time in my backyard. I've invested a lot of money in my backyard because I like to go out in my backyard in the evenings or on weekends and enjoy the view. Now, thanks to, Mr. Thanks to Mr. Davis, This is now the view from my backyard, and I hate it. I very much resent what he's done. And as far as all these neighbors are concerned that said, it's just fine for you to put this building up, we don't have a problem with it. No, they don't have a problem with it because they don't have to put up with it. And I do. Every time I walk out of my house in my backyard, I got to look at that thing, and I don't like it. And I really resent having to be here because he didn't get a building permit. Now, if he had got a building permit, I have to live with whatever the code is. may not like it, but I have to live with it. You're going to make a decision, and you're going to go home, 
And I doubt if you have anything like this sticking up out in your backyard. I go home and you make a decision in favor of Mr. Davis. I've got to look at that for as long as I live at my house. Like I said, there is a proper procedure for doing additions in a neighborhood. Mr. Davis chose not to follow that procedure. As a matter of fact, construction started on Saturday when there was no one at the building codes. I sent an email into the action line, I let them know what is going up. I called on Monday morning and I asked, has a building permit been issued on this property? None had. A notice was put on his door. It stayed on the front door for over a week. The next Saturday, they came out and they put up the panels. Finally, on Saturday, that notice was taken down. But they also started more work on it. And I called the code department and said, work is continuing. That's when an inspector went out and stopped the work. Now, if Mr. Davis wants a place to park his RV, there are commercial places for him to do that. And his building is more than, he told me that he had to have 15 foot clearance in order to get his RV in the facility. It sticks up and it's a sore thumb. Thank you. Board members, any questions? Mr. County? Okay, thank you. Ms. Cabrera? My name is Marion Cabrera. I live at 10,001 Casa Linda which is diagonal across from Mark Davis. I'm sorry my voice shakes. If you can't understand me, just nod and I'll repeat myself. Oh, we can hear you. <clears throat> you uh, might lower that mic just a little bit, just to get your comments in the record. Yep. Is that better? I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, the little notice she sent out where it says subject is right over my house so you can see how close I am to Mark Davis's house. It is an eyesore. It is higher than his roof. It looks like a commercial building. Doesn't belong in a residential area. You know, I've lived there 27 years. Nobody close to us has a building that high. The picture of one he took over on 103rd is not in our neighborhood. It's several blocks away. I hope you'll reconsider or at least consider either having him lower it or do away with it, because it just doesn't belong in our neighborhood. It's ugly. <laughs> it's, it's commercial. You know, I don't know what he could do to it to make it look residential. That's it. That's, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, no, questions? I heard pretty much what I expected to hear. Yeah, so. I think so. Um, I'll just put my thoughts out there. Um, I like to think of it as if, consistent with what Mr. Downey said, we were deliberating before this were constructed. Uh, we're past that now, but putting myself in that position of before this were constructed, would we approve this? I don't think that we would. Um, and so I think that the fact that it's already been partially constructed, you know, doesn't really weigh on that decision in my mind. Um, I think it's excessive. I think this is probably the first application I've seen where there are no favorable considerations, uh, I've noted, from city staff. Normally we have something, but there are no favorable considerations. And I tend to kind of concur with that. I think it's too large. Um, I think it, it, it is not in conformance with the um, purposes of the code, and I, I can't support approval. I'm the same. I came in here thinking there's no way that I can support this. It's just been reaffirmed of that if I needed to be. I didn't, but you know, way too big, too high, uh, it's way in front of the building line. It just doesn't fit. 
I, uh, her, uh, it's massive, it's overwhelming, and it doesn't comport to the neighborhood and the area. It, uh, the the rec statutory requisites have not been met in this case uh, in any way, the hardship or anything. There's no hardship if you start a building without permission. That is not a hardship. Uh, um, can you hear me? Oh, okay. I have. I cannot. Uh, I cannot uh, approve this because I think it's too massive. It, once you get the pitch going, and when, once you get everything else, and just looking at the frame that we have pictures of, it's overwhelming. And looking at the distance for the neighbors looking over the fence every day coming out in the back and looking at that. And it's going to be taller than the house to begin with. Uh, so it doesn't matter if other people have different things. We're looking at your application, and your application stands alone, and we review a case-by-case -case basis. We, you know, some of the others may not have permission either. We don't know that. But uh, I'm not going to be able to recommend approval on this one. I, I just think to to... Ms. Lewis's point, every applicant in seeking a variance has to meet the statutory requirements that the Oklahoma legislature has set for us to review. Um, those include four elements. The application of the ordinance to this particular piece of property would create an unnecessary hardship. And so what Ms. Lewis is saying is she hasn't found a hardship, and I would agree with that. I don't, I don't see a hardship here that's recognized, at least under the code or contemplated. Um, a key one we look for is that there's something about this property that's peculiar, that's different than a normal property. Um, and so we have to find that as well. And I, I don't think that that's met. I don't think there's anything here that makes it particularly peculiar. Um, the relief, if granted, would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good. We've got several neighbors who oppose the application. Um, and we think that those are pretty good reasons. At least I think they're pretty good reasons. I think it would violate the public good. And then the variance of granted is the minimum necessary. Generally, what we look for here is if you're seeking a variance to something that's a 10-foot allowance to you and you're seeking a, a variance so you can build something that's 12 feet, that might be the minimum necessary to alleviate a hardship that you've already established. But we just haven't met any of these elements here. Um, and I concur with Ms. Lewis. Do I get a rebuttal from what? Do I have time for a rebuttal from what they I think you should probably address what the, the board's concerns. Um, if you have a no, no, I, okay. I can do that. Yes. Okay, sure. I don't know if I was going to be allowed to speak again. Sure. Um, I think we had one more comment. But. No, I exactly concur. That that was the thing. The design, the character of the neighborhood is one, but the second is also the statutory minimum requirements, in which I can't see them. And then if you'd like to respond to any of the comments. Yeah. Uh, would you like me to address some of your concerns that the board has, uh, because? I understand what you're saying. I, I can guarantee you 100% there is no way that building is taller than my house. I made sure of that when we were building it. Uh, the reason the reason we started building it on a Saturday is because none of us are actual, you know, that's not what we do for a living. Uh, you know, we, we built, me and my friends built this building. Now, I got guys that do construction, but, you know, it's, it, they were just helping me out. The building's tall yes it's sturdy i mean it stood up to the 70 mile an hour straight winds we had hurricane winds i mean that building's never budged it's still there so it, that's not a concern so as far as the the height of it i guess is the main thing that everybody's if i understand correctly is what kind of concerns you guys uh like i said there's several other buildings that are just as tall now i know they're they may not be legal i don't know if they are or not uh, if there's something else that we can do to make this acceptable, I guess, uh, for you guys, you know, that will still work for us. I mean, I'm open to listen to whatever options that we have. I've thought about that as well, but I just don't know that there's any relief that we could grant that would allow you to do what you want to do. And so I think the scope of a variance that we would have to grant for you to be able to park that RV in here I think we'd have to grant a variance to the height. I think we'd have to grant a variance to the pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have to grant a variance probably to the setbacks unless you wanted to move this entire structure or something. So I just don't think that we can get there even by kind of cutting down the amount of variances that you would 
be requesting. I still don't think we can get there, although I'm open to ideas. I, I generally am the one that's, or I'm one on the board that's trying to really work with you and see if there's some way we can come to something, but yes, sir. I just didn't see it here. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, just, and I know this is probably not going to make any difference for you guys, but just, just for Mr. Downey, you know, he, he's right there next door to me, but there's three people directly west of me that are just 15 foot further away from me than he is, and they had no, absolutely no problem with it. So, but I understand that, that what we're working with here is the variances that I'm looking for as far as the height, and that seems to be what the issue is. Uh, the peak, you know, I could, I, I may be able to do something with the peak. I don't know for sure if that would be something we could do, uh, but. That's a setback's pretty uh, considerable as well. An encroachment on it. You talking about how close it is to the street? You're right. In line with your building is where it should be in your building line. Yes, yes, and that. And again, I, I went down to the permit building or permit office to begin with. Uh, went down there and got all the specs. I had all intentions of getting a permit for this building. So when I went down there, I got. Well, I thought I got all the specs. Obviously, I did not. I, I misunderstood. When they said 15 foot, I, I thought that meant 15 foot to the street, from the street. I did not realize there was a 25 foot from the center and then 15 foot on top of that. I, I, I don't build. I don't know that. Uh, all, the other, all the other deals are in coordinates as far as where it is placed besides I put it too close to the street. Now, the other stuff as far as the height and stuff like that, I was not aware of that. Uh, obviously, if we would have got a permit, I well, probably would have been aware of that before I got this far along. Uh, and that was, you know, that was my fault. I went down there a month or so before we ever started and got all this stuff information. So I had every intention of doing that. And as far as the uh, notice that I got for our building when we first, when Mr. Downey first called in, I guess, uh, the notice didn't actually tell me to stop building. So, and of course, the only time we can work is on the weekend. So I wasn't trying to supersede anybody by doing that. That's when we can work. We, we all work during the day. So weekend's the only time we had to work on it. So, but when I actually got the deal that came out and he told us to stop building, we never did another thing to that building. We were still sitting the same way it is. So I, I, I wasn't trying to, I don't know what you want to call it. Yeah, no, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. And that, we're not beating you up about that or anything, but just, okay. you know, even the setback point, I think we might be able to work with that depending on the circumstances yes sir I, I don't know that these protests would still be protests if all you were seeking were a variance to the setback so for example if mr downey you know if you're within the setback requirement would mr downey still oppose it probably you know so that it's more about the size it's not so much the setback at yeah. least for our purposes and so that's where i get back to the point i don't know how you can fit anywhere close to the code by having a building that will cover your RV. I just don't know, you know, it, how that's possible. So that's why I think we would have to deny the application. Just, I just don't see how we can work with it. But I'm only one member of the board, so. If I don't mind, I'd like to ask John, uh, John just a question. Is there anything uh, you had noted on the unfavorable considerations uh, that the variance is substantial Buildings highly visible, and then on the favorable, that you couldn't identify any. Is there anything within reach that could be a workable situation, except for the heights? I mean, as to the setback or some others on your recommendations. The only thing, if if it was just about the door height possibility, but everything else, I don't see anything that would be favorable for this. It's everything's excessive on what on what he has out there: height, setback, pitch. It's all pretty excessive. Yeah, and I, 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 so your neighbors probably have a six or eight foot fence, um, something like that. So even if you were within code, they would be able to see it because you'd, you're allowed 10 feet, um, mm -hmm. so they'd see it. So it's not just that it's visible to the neighbors, it's just how excessive it is. Well, if, if I could just add something onto that. <laughs> I've come to find out from my neighbors that have been there for a while, that are around me, that Mr. Downey has fought every building that's been built, even if it's been within code. Every building that's been built in our neighborhood, he has fought it. So it's not just 
my building and just the height of my building his is I don't know what you want to call anti-building. I don't know what it is, but he does not like buildings built in our neighborhood. When I was going around and getting signatures, I had several neighbors that knew immediately before I even said anybody's name exactly who was giving me the, you know, the whatever you want to call it, the, the yeah, objection to it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah. I mean, I I understand what your guys are saying. I know it's that's why I'm here is to try to get it approved for the the overall height. But his argument is more not really my building itself, but buildings in general throughout the whole neighborhood. So. Yeah, he, you're allowed to build whatever you want within code. Yes, sir. He's allowed to protest. Oh, yeah. Yes, Especially sir. if it's out of code, you know, and you're trying to get a variance, he's mm -hmm. definitely allowed to protest. Um, if it's within code, you know, build whatever you want. And it, if, even if it's a small variance, I think we'd probably work with you. We work with folks all the time. Even even over the objection of protestants, sometimes. So yeah. um, I just don't see how this one, you know, given the height of what you would need in order to house this uh, RV, I don't know that we can get there. But um, any motions? I mean, before we vote, the only other thing I can think of, and this would be um, as a courtesy to you, if you think that there's a way that you could cut this down. I don't know how big the RV is. You know, I don't know what the minimum that you could possibly go with. I still think the minimum that you could possibly go with would be very excessive. Um, but, you know, you tell me. You're talking about the overall height of the building itself or the the overall height of the door has to be 12 because the RV itself, travel trailer itself, is 11.5, I think. Yeah. And, of course, they don't make a 11, you know, 8 door or whatever. You know, it's either 10, 12, or I think it's how they do it. So, uh but as far and I talked to one of my guys that helped me put it together, the, I don't know for sure either if there is a way that we could lower the sides and make it where it had a bigger pitch and still keep that garage door that high. But if that was a possibility, would that make a difference yeah, to I mean, the board? It'd be 12 feet with a flat roof, I guess, would be the minimum. Yeah, as long as that pitch is required and that brings it up an extra, what, four inches or whatever the pitch is always required right under all circumstances i guess we can grant variance to it but yeah so uh, it, the minimum that would be required to do what you want to do about the storage of your vehicle it, no matter how you look at it you're not going to be able to fit it in that would be something we could approve i don't think as the chairman had noted earlier if you just want to you know you can get your tools and you can do all this other stuff by going within the code. I just think, um, you know, you have to include in that what the pitch is and how the height. So that includes the pitch, correct? So you have to have all of it together. And you're not going to be able to modify that to fit your needs except to put your tools and your other things inside that are smaller. And you can do that without a variant. Yeah, I think it would just be off-site off -site storage, unfortunately. So, um, and, and even if you shrunk this down to where you could fit a, a truck in there instead of the RV or something, I still think you'd probably need a variance for the, for the setback. So I don't know if you want to try to get that today or maybe come back on that or something, but, or if you're just not going to complete the project anymore. Um, if you don't get the full size, you, kind of you tell me. But. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear some of that, sorry. Sure, no, so you mentioned that you're going to park your truck in there part of the time? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Okay. So your truck, I don't think you would need a variance. If, if in order to, to store the truck, you could have as much smaller building just to store the truck. Y yes, sir. I think it would be like a 10-foot door, which I don't know what the, I don't even know what the specs are exactly on that building, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. So that you don't have to completely demolish what's there, and you might be able to salvage what's there in order to at least have something that's large enough to fit the truck, and you don't have to file a new application for the setback variance, you might want to come back to the board um, and request a continuance, modify your application, and that will at least save you from having to file for a new application for a variance. That's what I was requesting, or suggesting. Okay. Um, unless the board members had any other ideas. I mean. I think that's probably your, your best bet is to come back, 
let us know that you're not seeking a variance on the height or any of that stuff. It would just be on the setback. And then you could still have the structure, but you'd shade down the height. And then you could store your truck and your tools there. Okay, so just so I'm clear on what you're telling me, and I make sure I understood you correctly, sorry. Uh, you, you're basically saying if we lower it down to what the actual specs are supposed to be for a building, which would be a 10-foot door. Is that right, Mr. Wilson, a 10-foot door and a... I think it's a 9-foot door. A 9-foot door and 10-foot sidewalls. Is that what it is? 9-foot on the door, and if the building's over 10 feet tall, it cannot have metal walls. Okay. So a 9-foot door? And then... Uh, it would need a 412 pitch. Also, is this does this have a uh, concrete foundation under it? Yes, sir. How how far are you off that utility easement? Are you on the center of the 10 foot easement, or are you is your concrete uh, off the edge of it, or you talk about how far is? I'm sorry. What is the question? I'm sorry. At your utility easement there on the was that the north side? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. On the back fence line? Right. Yes, sir. It's it. It tells me I have a 10-foot easement on the back, which I have that. I'm, I'm, I'm over that. I'm on 10-foot. But when I actually had them come out and mark the utilities, it's that may be some old utilities that was there before because the only ones they marked were like two foot off the back fence line. Is that what you're asking me, sir? Yeah, I'm just looking at this drawing. But it is, it is, it is the 10-foot off the back fence. Okay. I just... If it was on a utility easement, I'd say you might have other issues. Oh, yeah. No, sir. Okay. No, it's not on any utilities at all. Yeah, so to kind of continue your thought um, that you're getting to earlier on a summary of what needs to be done, I think it's the temperature of the board that they would not be inclined to grant a variance on the height um, and the pitch and some things like that. And so you would probably want to work with city staff on revising the application so that you can still use that concrete foundation and most of what's already there, but it would just be a smaller variance. And then you wouldn't have to completely swipe the whole thing. And would I still need to come back before this board, or would that just be, okay, I would, okay. That would be still this board, but it would take care of that setback um, variance, because that, that is an issue that you would need to resolve if you want to salvage any of this project, but right. you wouldn't have to file a new application and pay that fee. Yeah. Yeah, so, unfortunately for that, there's, like I said, I already, already have all the slab board, all the, the main, excuse me, the main frame is all up. All the piers are already, you know, buried in the ground. I mean, all that's already done, so it's fortified in that position, unfortunately. So I understand, and that's the thing. I think yeah. we can, you can still salvage some of this, but even to do that, you need a variance on the setback from us. How about a continuance? I think, yeah. If he agrees or would request one, mm -hmm. the board would be willing to grant you. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I would take that favor of allowing you a continuum. How, how long is that can, how long do I have to make the adjustments on that? It, it, it's up to you however long you think you would need. We meet every two weeks generally. Oh, and I just reapply? Um, you would just continue it now, today, to a date certain in the future. Um, do we have a meeting in two weeks or is it a month? So October 17th, if you think you can get everything arranged in that amount of time, we can schedule it for then or you can do it in a month. Okay, uh, I, I would need to talk to uh, the guys that has been helping me and find out what kind of time frame we're looking at to get people out there to do that. So that's going to probably be a lot of work. Uh, I don't think they're asking you to uh, have oh. it done in two weeks. Oh. They're asking you to change your application. Oh, oh, oh I'm sure week. I could do yeah, that. When, yeah. when sorry. You, when, no, it's fine. When I'm can sorry, you come man. back to us and discuss possibly getting a variance on the setback? That's because okay. that'll be generally the only issue that we're going to discuss. I understand. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. I'm no, sorry. I, I, I really have trouble hearing sometimes. <laughs> sure. No problem. Um, do you think two weeks is enough? I think so. Okay. Yeah. One other thing I would say is get with uh, the protestants, your neighbors. It would be helpful to let have a discussion with them uh, just to make sure. Okay. Uh, and that's a good idea. The next time around, uh, they're not going to be, you know, to see if they would be uh, amenable to modifying it to the point it would just be the step back yes ma'am thank you sure um, so do we have a motion from a uh, board member to continue the application motion to continue case number one four six six three to uh, the october 17th meeting second a motion and a second to continue case number one four six six three to the october 17th meeting cast your votes please and it's approved
Item number four, case number 14665, request for a variance to the 20-foot front yard setback in the PUD 1111 Plan Unit Development District, located at 3325 Northwest 189th Terrace. Hello, I'm Eric Thornhill, 11050 Old Windmill Road in Arcadia. Um, I'm one of the owners of Beacon. Uh, we've been in the building for, since 2003, and this is the first for us of this nature. Um, we built a house on a curve that um, it was missed in about four different places in our company. Uh, it, um, excuse me, three different places in our company and one outside of our company, um, our um, foundation company. We submitted a plan to the city. Uh, the, the plot plan was the wrong house on the wrong lot, and the city corrected that. When we resubmitted, um, we have an estimating company that loads all of our data, and our contractors pull the data from our database. And so the, sh the short version of that is when we corrected the plot plan, he had pulled the old plot plan and not has had not updated his. Um, the appearance is the reason it went unnoticed, is because as it sits on the corner, it's difficult to notice that the house doesn't set back. As many homes as we built, you would think that it would have been, but um, I think this picture probably captures it pretty well. So um, essentially, we've got a house built over a setback. We have a customer that, it was a custom home, um, they're living in the home. Uh, we, are, we did not ask them to close on the home. We didn't want them to close on the home. But they were out of town, and they, they needed to move into a home, and we were fine with that. We just said we're going to do an early occupancy agreement. We'll take it before, and we'll work on our approval with the board. And then at that point, based on you guys' decision, we would close after the fact. But they do not, they're not, they have not closed on their mortgage. Um, the title insurance is really what's at stake here, um, so that they have a variance for that. This is a uh, more difficult one. Sometimes it's a foot or two. I get it. Obviously, the thing in your favor is, well, a couple things, but that it's on a curve, although I don't think the curve is probably 10 feet, but it's on a curve. Um, it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll open it up to board members for any questions. But. I guess I'm, people are getting tired of hearing me lecture, but uh, no, I really okay. do wish we had an ordinance that required this to be done and set down and survey or something, site survey or something, before you start construction, before you put it, the foundation down, uh, be, especially cul-de-sacs and properties that are just not, if they look pie-shaped, if they look have curves on them. I mean, there are so many times people, they don't usually get it this far off, but they get a half of a building or a corner. You, the practices, your business practice, your best practices should not be putting you in a situation, of course, you're saying there was an arrow out was loaded. Would it have made a difference if it had been loaded properly on the right schematic? Uh, uh, Again, there was about, there were several people, because our foundation company, to your point, uh, Ms. Lewis, we, it is now written into our scheduling structure that they have to survey any lot that has curved data on it. So we've made that part of our policy, regardless of, if the city's ordinance, we've made that part of our schedule, our contract, I mean, our construction supervisor's um, construction schedule, that we have to order that the surveyor go and verify the front um, marks with, the, uh, with the, the home. We aren't making them do all four points, but we are making them do the front on any lot that has curved data. Um, we should have caught this. Our supervisor should have caught this. The contractor who was setting the forms should have caught this. We've built a lot of homes. We've built many of them in this neighborhood. Um, and so it is the second time it's happened to us. 
Um, actually, it's the third time in the history. We had a neighborhood years and years ago, like in 2006, that has happened to. And so, um, unfortunately, um, it's just, it's, it is due diligence in our company, so, but. Now, I looked, I went out there, it took a while to find the place, oh. but uh, I did go, I couldn't believe we were so far north, Oklahoma City boundaries are far and wide. The, all of the driveways on that street look short to me. I, I, I mean, it, it, it didn't appear out of, if you look at your, Photo, I couldn't tell that it was ten foot. That it was ten foot off. Uh, and looking at it, then I thought, well, maybe some of the others aren't in compliance either. But I didn't ask. Uh, so I wasn't as disappointed as I thought I might be when I looked at it. I I think we had one of these a while back. It was like that on the in the north, very far northwest area where they're having kind of not a full large front yard and that kind of thing. Uh, there is that a better picture. Yeah. If you look at it, it you can't really see the discrepancy. That isn't to forgive you. It's just um, I don't know. I just I just I appreciate the fact that you're changing your practice because I think we ought to have an ordinance that says that that it ought to be changed for everybody because we shouldn't have to be reviewing these, in, in my opinion. Um, that, those are my comments. Or if we do, it's just kind of gross negligence and, and not complying, you know, instead of, I don't know, it's just something where they just literally didn't even look or something like that. But board members, any comments? You uh, in the market for a new surveyor? Man. Well, it wasn't his fault. We didn't have him survey this before we set the forms. It is, he does a pretty good job, um, but. Yeah, I mean, he's only as good as the plans that he's, he's that's given. That's exactly right. Now, I think our trade would have pulled tape if he would have thought it looked out of line. He's, he does a lot of work for us, and I think our supervisor would have pulled tape. I, I called. My partner and I said, I just want to make sure before I go in front of these people, why did not our guy pull tape on this? He's like, he just didn't recognize that it was that far off. And so it's not an excuse. It really isn't. Um, and, you know, as far as a, an ordinance or a, when they come back out to do, just like they do a, an elevation survey, you know, a two-part survey, I'm not trying to give the city advice, but that's exactly when it would happen, is they could come out and they could survey that it was built at that point, because they, before we pour, they come out and survey the elevation before they, on the floodplain stuff that we deal with, but anyway. So. Well, I, I, I'll put my thoughts out there. I think just the curve kind of saves the application a bit, and um, the fact that it's not visually uh, standing out, I think, tips in favor of the application. 10 feet. A lot. We, I, I know we've rejected applications for 10 feet before, um, but those are generally a standard grid pattern where they just blew it, and it looks out of character. Um, here, I can I can potentially get on board, but I'm only a one board member, so I can definitely get on board. I mean, it's a plot situation, and then I know I feel like you know they did it, and then we kind of went in, the city went in and checked it too. So it's one of those things. But yeah, I can go in favor of this one. I can also move in favor, and I appreciate that your company has taken the steps that, to prevent this in the future, but because as our chairman said, we see these cases every so often, and it uses attention to detail, what's needed. I can barely get behind it. Um, <laughs> Ten foot is excessive as far as missing that much, but uh, like the chair said, it, it is on a curve, and that is in your favor, and I. Looking at it here, I didn't drive it, but you know, it, it kind of seems like it fits. But be curious to see what it would look like if it was on the building line. Uh, if I could see the difference, it would help. But you know, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, for, if it, you, you can come and get a variance, or I, I guess you could go get a spud, but and try to solve it that way. You know, 
Oh, leave it back in front of you. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back in front of you. So, um, do I have a motion? I, um, I move uh, case number 14, the approval of case number 14665. Uh, Approval of a variance to the 20-foot front yard setback requirement being over 10 feet in arrears uh, for a specific finding. There was a curve in the area and that uh, distorted uh, the property uh, location and um, that the requisites have been met. Second. A motion and a second to approve case number 14665 for the reasons that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance with the specific findings of Ms. Lewis. Cast your votes, please. And the variance is approved. Wow. Thank you guys very much. Back to yeah, item two. By the way, the homeowner was like, yeah, just let me know. He was really cool about it. He didn't notice it either, and he watched the whole house being built so um, for the record or maybe not for the record but um, so there wasn't pushback and he, since we've been in the house we haven't had any any complaints from any customers and that house that neighborhood is almost fully built out now so anyway thank you guys look like the other call one case number two just for the record item number two case number one four six six two request for variance to the use of metal siding for exterior walls on new construction in the CCBD Central Business District Urban Design Overlay District located at 15 Southwest 25th Street. I don't see the applicant. Do out of courtesy for the applicant, do we have a motion to continue this application to the next meeting? A motion to continue case number 14662 to the October 17 meeting. Second. Second. Motion and a second to continue case number one. 4662 to the October 17th meeting. Cast your votes, please. And it's approved. Seeing no additional, well, are there any, uh, no additional items, communications, or reports? Uh, any board members have any issues? Great. No issues, but I've enjoyed serving with all of you. Is this your last meeting? I believe so, unless, yeah, I believe so. If we, if we let you go, yeah. <laughs> the baby might come before you, then. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate your service. Um, no citizens to be heard or, or their business, we are adjourned.